Hello Animals fans and welcome back to the review of Cycle 5. Now remember what cycles are from Jake through to Marco, including any side books in the equation. So we've got 21 The Threat through to 25 The Extreme and The Hawk Bajir Chronicles. Excellent. What do we think of this cycle of books? Let's cover the main plot points. 21 and 22, of course, cover the end of the David trilogy, an incredibly important part of the series because we're getting into the real hard-hitting stuff now. Moving on to The Pretender, we find out who Tobias's father is, even though the situations by which we learn that are a bit sketchy. <laughs> 24, The Suspicion is a filler book, so it doesn't really play much into the plot. And then The Extreme, again, it's sort of filler, but it has a lot of great character interactions which show the Animorphs in an extreme environment working together as a team. Hawkbeardier Chronicles, not much that we didn't already know, but it adds a huge amount of lore and depth to the series. It's an, a very important run of books here. I think the effects of this particular run will be seen throughout the rest of the books. We talked in uh, Cycle 4 about how the stakes were rising, how the impacts of the things that they were doing were growing in size. That particular cycle is more the size of the things that they influenced. They were blowing up shit left, right and centre. Entire continents. They blew up the dinosaurs. They blew up fucking everything. This one is a lot more subtle in the size of its consequences. It's not big explosions. It's large, metaphorical explosions, really. The horrors that were experienced during the David trilogy, where they had to trap a, a kid in Morph, and they lost him to the dark side. The whole thing with Tobias, not knowing whether he was hawk or human, and settling on a, a strange compromise, and also learning that he's part alien. I mean, that seems like pretty big stuff. The suspicion... Pff, and the extreme, sort of semi but we did find Derek the Inuit. We gain a massive insight into hawk -Bajir culture and gain an incredible amount of sympathy for the hawk -Bajir. And we see that carry through into The Pretender, where of course we introduce Toby Hammy, who is going to be an integral part of the story going forward, becoming more so as we enter the, the climax of the Animorph series. So yeah. These four specifically are hugely important. These two are, uh, yeah, not quite as important, but still good books. And of course, the first ghost written book, The Extreme, was not a letdown and was in fact one of the more consistently, one of the more consistent books when you take into regard the series as a whole. A lot of the times in Animals books, there'll be little bits where it's not quite consistent with the laws of the Animals universe. This one was surprisingly consistent. Great job to Jeffrey Zilk. I assume I'm pronouncing the name correctly, but he did a fantastic job with the extreme in keeping close to the Animorphs' lore, L-O-R-E. Character development. Well, there are two characters here that didn't see much character development. Marco and Cassie. In their books where they narrated, there was very little character development. But to be fair, in these two books, and obviously in the Discovery, which was in the last cycle, but was part of the David trilogy, Cassie and Marco gained a lot of character development. We saw how cold and ruthless Marco could be and how detrimental that could be to the dynamics of a team. He was one of the major reasons why David turned out to be such a twat. Was Marco just being as cold and ruthless as he, he often turns out to be? So Marco did get his fair share of character development, admittedly, at the end of the last cycle, but it carried on a bit into these two books here. Cassie obviously had a big impact on these two books as well. She also took charge of the Morphin Cube and she was probably the most, the sort of person who'd be affected most by the effects or the, the consequences of what happened to David. The other characters, Rachel. Rachel is, is a difficult one because there's not, there's not so much character development as character amplification. And we saw that a lot in The Solution, where even Jake is now saying to her, I don't know what's going to happen, happen to you after the end of the war because you're just off your rocker, essentially. And he, he says that 
straight up to Rachel. And I think that's what we're getting with her. Tobias, he's still juggling the hawk and human thing. And I think he's coming to more of a compromise, compromise but he had to, it was uh, the night was darkest before the dawn sort of scenario where he was on the verge of just giving up, trying to find a compromise. But in the end, he, he came to it somehow. I forget specifically how. <laughs> Something about Elfangor making sacrifices in order to carry out his duty, which is what Tobias eventually settled on doing. Making that personal sacrifice of not quite being who he wanted to be in order to do what he thought was right. Axe doesn't have a book in this in this cycle, so he got very little character development. He had some great jokes here or there, I'll give him that. But yeah, no book and not that much character development, which is more understandable. Jake, however, is the biggest change, by far the biggest change in this cycle of books. Jake, after the David trilogy, trilogy through these books, these three, outstanding leadership for the most part. He did make his mistakes, but he is just a light bulb has gone off in his head. Right, this is how I need to do my job now. No more bullshitting, no more fucking playing the nice guy. I am the leader now. And that first came about in The Solution where he had that talk with Rachel and it was beautiful. And just seeing Jake's development, he, he, he shines without shining, I think is the, the phrase I came up with in my head when I was on my daily walk. He doesn't, he doesn't stand out, but in the background, he is doing so much. He is influencing this team to an, in, an incredible degree. And I am loving seeing how Jake is developing. And he is a fantastic character. And I've loved every bit of him throughout this cycle of books. It is amazing how far he has come. So that about wraps up the important stuff from this cycle. A lot of this stuff will come back. We'll see more from the Dakaldria stuff later on in the series. Whether that stuff in particular turns out to be important, that's yet to be decided. But they did uh, bring forth Toby Hammy, who is sort of an amalgamation of the two in terms of character and personality. And she is going to propel the series forward yet again. But yeah, that's that. Let's talk about the more trivial stuff. What's my favourite cover, for example? Well, my favourite cover out of these books is this one, actually. Let me just get it out for you here. This one. I, I like this cover. I just, it looks visually pleasing, which isn't normal for these books. I don't know, I think it's because the anteater is such a cool looking animal, and the way that Cassie morphs, it just, it, it actually looks not completely disgusting. I quite like the colour scheme as well. I think that's a really smart book cover. Which one is the worst book cover of this bunch? Oh, by the way, if I were to include this book, it would be, that would be my favourite. Or no, the other Hawkbajir Chronicles one, which is up there, which is basically, which is basically that, but a front cover version. But yeah, of the main series books, the Suspicion is my favourite, but this one is my least favourite, the one on the extreme. Mostly because of how goofy Marco looks in his mid-morph phases. It just looks so goofy. He... <laughs> I, I don't know, it's just, what do you think? It just looks silly. Of course, if, if you've been watching my reviews, you'll pretty much know which is the best and worst book of this cycle. If we're talking all of them, The Hawkbridge Chronicles was a solid 10 out of 10, best book. If I'm talking about these ones, it's probably The Solution, which was a 9 out of 10, but I believe I gave it a strong 9 out of 10, I believe. It's been a while. But if I were to look at them and say, which is your favourite, I would probably go with The Solution. The worst book of this lot is The Suspicion. Not that it's a bad book, it is a filler book, and I think that's part of the reason why it only got a 7 out of 10. But 7 out of 10 isn't bad. In fact, 7 out of 10 is it's, it's just a good, really. It's a good book. But it is the weakest of what is actually a solid bunch. Now, I've rounded up the scores. And the average score of this cycle, taking just the series books into account, is 8.4, which I think is joint level with the best cycle. I think the best cycle was cycle one, which I think also got an 8.4. So this is the best cycle. That changes when you add this one, which was, remember, a 10 out of 10, 
which overall brings the cycle average to 8.7, which is head and shoulders above the other cycles. So this is, according to my statistics, the best cycle so far, cycle five, which isn't that surprising when you consider the roster, let's be honest. Best and worst moments. Let's cover the worst moment first. It's got to be the end of the suspicion, which was just a hodgepodge of childishness, really. It was, it was just rushed to an ending that didn't make sense. If you want to look into more detail, go see my review for book 24. But yeah, the ending was weak. And I think that's why I brought it from an 8 out of 10 to a 7, just for the ending. It was, it was pretty bad. Overall, though, there aren't any parts in this cycle of books where I say that was a specifically a bad point. I mean, the ending of book 24 was a disappointment, but I wouldn't say it was bad, as in fucking awful. Yeah, it's been a pretty consistent run. Best moment of this cycle has got to be, and I said this at the time, that it was probably the best part of the entire series up to this point. And it is the talk that Jake has with Rachel in book 22, where he just fucking plays it straight. It was gorgeous. And I was, I was smiling to myself as I read that. It was awesome. That part where Jake basically says, you are not going to survive after this war should it end. Fucking brutal and an awesome thing to put in. Awesome. So yeah, that's my review of Cycle 5. And next we'll be moving on to Cycle 6, which starts with Book 26, The Attack. Another Jake book. And this is quite uh, well thought of amongst the fan base. And I believe, I don't think it was a ghost written one either. Let's have a quick check. Nope, it wasn't ghostwritten, so we're back to the usual authors after our brief stint with Jeffrey Zilk. Yeah, awesome cycle. Best so far, statistically. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon for the attack, the, the attack review. And I hope you enjoy it. If you do like these videos, remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Join the Animorphs Discord. The link is in the description below. We do regular quizzes. We talk about all Animorphs fun. And we just generally have good, solid banter. So, thank you very much for watching. I shall see you next time. Ta-ra.